Hey, race fans, it's race day. Top five with me, Frank Five. The regular season finale at the Brickyard, Indianapolis Motor Speedway, one of the most prestigious historic racetracks in all of NASCAR, hosts the regular season finale with a lot of twists and turns, drama of who's going to make it, who's going to not make it. But the first time that we've had a back to back Crown Joel winner with momentum going to the playoffs with an owner who's won the Indy 500. 17 times, got him a Brickyard 400, and it's about time. Number one, Brad Keselowski, who won the Southern 500 a week ago, backs it up with a win at the Brickyard 400 today, or people call it the Big Machines record 400 at the Brickyard. Captured his second win of the season with some momentum going into the playoffs, winning the race over Eric Jones, Denny Hamlin, Kevin Harvick, and Clint Boyer, top five. I mean, what a, what the last few weeks has been for the two car. They've absolutely upped their program and have put themselves in contention to probably be in the Final Four come time to champ fly for championship at Homestead. And Brian really didn't have quite a winning card today because, you know, they you know they started the race on owner's points. He started in the top ten and hung around there. And then they had a pit stop where they got run to by their teammate Ryan Blaney, and they lost their track position, had to fight for it back. And the final stage of the race, he it was the last to pit under green flag, and then the caution comes out for a piece of debris. Restarts eighth with fresh tires, starts past the guys, then a caution comes out for Landon Castle and Jeffrey Earnhardt tackling turn three. And on the final restart, Brad gets a good restart at the expense of the 14 of Boyer and is able to pass Denny Hamlin for the lead, coming to the white flag in the middle of turns three and four, which was textbook. That's exactly what I do. And they were racing hard for it. I mean, that was exciting racing for, you know, a race that pretty much been characterized as you know, pretty boring the last few years. I mean, last year's was exciting, but this one I think probably may have topped that because, you know, we got contenders that we expect to be running up front for races and championships. Of course, Brad's a champion. Uh, no, Hamlin hasn't had a championship yet. But it was so cool to see veterans going at it for a Breaker 400. The determination to put their name on a Breaker 400 trophy and kiss the yard of breaks at the end is very special. And Brad's got momentum at the right time going to the playoffs. So watch out for the two team. They could be strong going into Vegas next week. Number two, the big three. Last few weeks really haven't been dominant like they've been at the beginning of the season. We've seen other teams step up, obviously like Brad Keselowski, but we've seen Kurt Busch, we've seen Chase Elliott, we've seen Joey Logano, Larson, Blaney, Hamlin, and Eric Jones. They've stepped it up. The highest finish of the victory today was Harvick, who finished fourth. And, you know, he led a lot of laps, and Kyle Busch, who came in as the favorite, despite, you know, no price or qualifying for him or any of the other 39 teams in this race. Had a lot of back and forth today, you know, getting caught for a commitment line violation at the end of stage two because he pitted and the leader unfortunately got to line with two to go, so he was penalized for that. Then he had a flat tire, then he got the caution, was able to come back to finish eighth. But as for Martin Truex Jr. and all the Furniture Row fans, and of course it's been a difficult week after the announcement that they won't be back next year. Had started the back because they failed pre-qualifying inspection three times. Drove up in the mid-pack and then they had a brake rotor fail and he finished dead last, so... I'm morally worried that Truex may not be in the Final Four. I'm not entirely sure, but we're going to find out when we get the playoffs going. But right now, the Big Three, they are falling apart. I mean, we got the playoffs coming, so maybe they've they, they you know they've got a little spark left, but they haven't fallen apart lately. I don't know what's going on. Number four, Jimmy Johnson and Alex Bowman, who came into this race as the last two guys in on points. We knew one driver was going to make it on points. If we got a new winner outside of 16th, the guy that would be out would be Bowman. And there was a point today where Bowman was probably not going to make it. First of all, Bowman had a wreck with A.J. Allmendinger. And I thought, if we get a new winner, this will put Alex Bowman out. We didn't get a new winner, obviously. So Johnson and Bowman are in. That's 300 cars. But I'm sure Bowman fans were pretty much, you know, they were praying for no new winner, no new winner, no new winner, no new winner. I mean, they were literally, I'm sure Bowman fans that were at the racetrack and were probably watching at home and, you know, and everywhere were like holding their heart those laps, laps. Because we had two guys up there that could have won the race that were outside the top 16 and could have knocked Bowman out. Obviously, it didn't happen. You know, Bowman is going to be, he's going to be having a lot of sleep this week, knowing that he's got a shot for a championship. He's going to be able to compete for the playoffs. And now, Jimmy Johnson fans, now that you're in, can you find the spark to get yourself as a championship contender? We're going to find out. And number five, I thought the racing today was pretty exciting. The restarts, obviously, they're a lot of fun to watch, but they're like, you know, they got spread out. We saw guys grouped together and passing each other. Um, I thought it was really fun. I mean, they had the expanding race earlier today. I mean, 
I really wish, you know, they had the Arrow package of the Xfinity Series right because I think that would have provided a really good race. But I thought it was a good race overall. And, you know, we saw a lot of different guys up there. We saw McMurray almost had a chance to win the race and knock himself, put himself into the playoffs. And that Kenseth won a stage, and he had a chance to win. He had a fast car. I mean, he didn't get quite the finish. He'd hoped for 12, but that's still a good day for Roush in the, in the 16. And uh, we saw Newman up there. We saw Byron. We saw Menard. I mean, we saw a lot of guys up there that were just inching to try and get that edge to win the race. And knock out Alex Bowman or Jimmy Johnson. But didn't happen. But, you know, these guys sure put up one hell of a fight. Finally, Chase Elliott. You got a 15th place finish. That's not indicative of our race, though. We had a top 5, top 10 car pretty much the majority of the day for, you know, a track that Elliott's still trying to figure out. Still got to figure it out. I mean, finish-wise, finish we got to figure it out. Right, you know, setup-wise, we've gotten better. And uh, I, um, I'm i okay with this. Just uh, We're just... Uh, Gearing up for the playoffs. So, next week we go to Viva Las Vegas. The second time that Las Vegas will host... The first time that Las Vegas will be hosting a second cup race. Ain't that something. So, who's going to score big money in Vegas and earn himself a spot under the round of 12? And who's going to be behind the eight ball? So, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. Congrats to BK and his breaker form to win. See you next week for playoff time. Because it's time for the push to the championship.